if you master the technique of making a vinaigrette, you can vary up the ingredients you use, the vinegar, the oil, the seasonings, the herbs, and then you can create dozens of dressings. And on top of it, fresh made vinaigrette can usually last up in your refrigerator in a non-reactive container for up to two weeks. Throw it into a mason jar and keep it in there. And remember the ratio. A vinaigrette is usually one part vinegar to three parts oil. But I also have to share with you a myth buster. There are some vinaigrettes that benefit from having different ratios. For instance, if you're using citrus, I find that sometimes you need to do more like equal parts and some dressings actually require to use more vinegar than oil. It actually can benefit from that zing. So it really depends on what vinaigrette you're making, what vehicle you're putting it on, and you just have to go by taste. You'll notice that a lot of vinaigrettes call for extra virgin olive oil as your base and some sort of vinegar or citrus. Now, I don't have all the vinegars in the world, but I do have a good collection. And for a white vinegar, this happens to be like a white balsamic or white Modena vinegar. And white vinegar usually goes well with any kind of leafy green, so even like arugula, spring mix salad. And then you have your classic balsamic vinegar. So, you know, balsamic vinaigrette is super popular and that will be good on any kind of like hearty, like romaine lettuce. Red wine vinegar is good for like that zingy pop. So think like a lot of Greek or Italian salads, things with like cucumbers, tomatoes, feta, olives. Apple cider vinegar has a little bit of a fruity, sweet and tangy taste to it. So think about putting it in like summer salads that have like mayo. And rice vinegar is kind of my ultimate vinegar. I actually keep it right by my stove in one of those bottles. I like it that it's so light and it goes in a lot of Asian style dressings. Additional options are some of your lighter vinegars like champagne or sherry because they have kind of a not so strong vinegar taste. And other options definitely include Things like citrus, I usually always keep lemons and limes in my fridge all the time. The thing about citrus is that you can use not only the juice, but the zest as well. And don't forget the emulsifier, which can look like mayo, mustard, and honey. This is what combines the oil and the vinegar together. And when you whisk it, it most likely will not separate, at least not as much. So right now we're gonna make a classic vinaigrette. There's so many variations of this, but classic vinaigrettes are based off of garlic or shallot. I like to use shallot. It makes a huge difference. I feel like shallots are a little bit like a cross between onion and garlic. So you're just gonna finely mince or dice a shallot. I like to add the citrus or the vinegar, the acid, right onto the shallot because it actually mellows it out a bit. I've tried this with red wine vinegar and balsamic recently. Both are really good. Today I'm gonna go for a white. This happens to be the white balsamic vinegar or white Modena vinegar. You need one tablespoon for this amount. And this seems very like particular because I'm measuring, but the measurements are not hard to remember. We're gonna use a half teaspoon of mayo. And you might be thinking, mayo? I wanted to keep this nice and light. Look how little this is, right? And a mayo is a natural emulsifier and it also adds a little bit of a creaminess, a depth. Gotta shake this up. I don't like mustard juice coming out. You know what I'm talking about. We need a half teaspoon of Dijon mustard. Dijon mustard is my favorite vinaigrette ingredient. s &P, you know me. You always gotta season with salt and pepper, even if your other ingredients have flavor in it. We need about eighth of a teaspoon, so I'm just going to eyeball it. Kosher salt and then some black pepper, about an eighth of a teaspoon, eyeball it as well. At this point, you're pretty much done with all your vinaigrette ingredients, except for the olive oil. If you wanted to add a bit of sweetness, you could add a little squirt of honey, that's always good, but I'm gonna show you the classic. And if I was to use something like red wine vinegar, instead of the white, I would definitely suggest adding a little bit of dried oregano too, it's so good. Extra virgin olive oil makes a world of a difference in terms of flavor. I'm actually gonna measure it out three tablespoons. And why three tablespoons? Because we did one tablespoon of vinegar, right? One, two, three. I'm putting it in this measuring cup because it has a spout. With a vinaigrette, you want to stream in your olive oil last and you want to stream it in slowly. If for some reason you feel like maybe that's too much olive oil, at this point, put in a little, whisk it together and taste it. And then if you feel like it's too tangy and too sharp, you add the rest of your olive oil. That is a happy looking sauce. 
You can imagine that this tastes better as it sits because the shallots mellow out and they also infuse the vinaigrette itself. And if the emulsifiers weren't in here, it wouldn't stay this creamy and dreamy and put together. I'm just gonna grab a little bit of arugula and when you dress it, you don't wanna just douse it with the vinaigrette. You wanna grab a little bit and put it along the sides of the bowl like that. Just a little at a time because you can always add more. Gently toss it together. It's the shallots. Mm. You don't need much to make an impact. It is so simple, so delicious, and has a great depth of flavor. And you can always adjust it by adding a pop of sweetness. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, Feel free to like and subscribe to stay up to date on all of our latest videos.